while. I'm trying to remember some of the stats from the from the research. Excuse me. Um, yeah, I would like it actually. Thanks. We're good. All right. Would you say that the people of Palestine are living in fear? That's, that's very much true, especially for young people in Gaza. When we talk to them, they tell us that they do not feel secure. They feel personally threatened by the absence of law. And they don't, uh, um, they don't feel secure also about talking freely about their, their political opinions as well. So um, I think they're suffering from that. You work in a country every day that's full of chaos. Every day brings something different. What gives you hope? What motivates you to, to give it your all to these people? Uh, when I go to Gaza and when I see that young people um, take two hours to travel a 15 minute distance and they spend on travel whatever the stipend we provide for them to just come and attend our activities then I think that that I have to be there I have to um, if they come all that way if they take all the trouble to come and attend that means something to them so then I'm I'm more than happy to do sh my share to make sure that that to do my share to to provide for um, for the activities that that keeps them coming um, and 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 that that there's that there's more the international community has in, has boycotted the um, Hamas is election and their ruling of uh, Palestine. Could you talk about that? Yes. Um, when Hamas was elected uh, democratically in 2006, the international community did not recognize their coming to power because they see them as a terrorist organization. Therefore, they cut all international aid to the Palestinian Authority, which made up of about 60% of PA's budget. Uh, in addition to that, Israel also boycotted the Hamas government, and they said, we're going to cut all our tax returns that they were supposed to be giving to the Palestinian Authority, which made up about 20% of PA's budget. So, in a short period of time after Hamas came to government, the PA, the Palestinian Authority, lost 80% of its income. This meant that um, teachers uh, and all other kinds of government officials uh, could not get their salaries for months. Uh, they went on strike, um, schools did not start until after two or three months into the scholastic year, the following year, and um, public services came to a halt, and economy stagnated, and people were hungry. They were hungry. And um, 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 the PA was uh, pushed to a corner, and President Abbas saw that this couldn't continue like this. Therefore, they declared an emergency government, and uh, that meant that Hamas had to step down. But that intensified the political conflict between Hamas and Fatah, and there were bloody fights in, 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 in West Bank, and especially in Gaza, which ended with the Hamas takeover of the Gaza Strip. Um, and after the Hamas takeover of the Gaza Strip, uh, the consequences followed, which was that Israel declared uh, Gaza Strip as hostile entity. They tightened the closures uh, around Gaza, and uh, that meant that a lot of the goods uh, who, that were going in were restricted and were coming out, was not allowed. 
the movement of people was also coming to a halt. And this made the life of people in Gaza much more difficult than it already was. You're obviously very passionate about your job at Catholic Relief Services. Has there been one moment in time through all your experiences that you felt very grateful for being able to work with, with such a great organization? Those moments are um, many, especially when I get the opportunity to go to the field, when I'm not working in the office and always looking at the news and reports about what's going on and how many people are dying or, or hungry or are not able to get to where they want to travel to because of the movement and access rest restrictions. Um, that gets to be very frustrating if you're sitting in the office and have no contact with the people on the ground. But when you, uh, when you go out into the field and when you meet the young people um, who come to the activities with some hope of, of engaging their communities, learning something, or to vent, to be with their peers, um, to produce something for their community and for themselves. To be a part of that is wonderful. Also, um, just to be there and to listen to their stories and their suffering um, means a lot, means a lot to me. Um, of course, it does get frustrating when we are not able to make, generate the great changes that we want to see, um, but um, we try, we try hard. Thank you, Borjou. Um, all right, we need to cut. I don't know, how, how do I wrap it up? I'm, I think that, do, do, we, do we have enough to ask? Do we have enough stuff? Are we good, I um, think? He wants to know if we have enough stuff. Can we end it now? I think we covered everything. Yeah. Tabby's going to come in and ask a couple questions off camera. Okay. Okay. And then he wants to know how to end it. I'm just thinking of how after listening to all your phrases we can kind of put together. So if it's okay with you, Chris, can I just ask a couple questions? Yeah. And talk to Chris as though you were answering. Okay. Chris Excellent. Um, can you describe uh, the focus groups and the project that you were working on? Mm -hmm. um, and, st and start with the, the end. The answer, like a project that I was working on. Yeah. Working. Yeah. Can I go now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the project I'm primarily involved with in Gaza is called Gazan Youth Speak Out. And um, as part of this project, we wanted to generate this youth movement in Gaza that gives young people um, to a space to, to work for their communities a civic space where they can come together with their peers and talk about what's, what are major issues that are affect the, affecting their lives and do something about it, hopefully. And uh, as a start, starting point, we wanted to uh, create this infrastructure for the project that would help us uh, uh, reach out to young people, college age young people from 18 to 25 from throughout Gaza Strip. So we identified five organizations from each of the five governorates and we built a youth consortium of 25 local organizations in Gaza. And along with this set setting up of this project infrastructure, we designed a participatory research project. Um, uh, we uh, identified tw t about 20 young people as youth researchers and we partnered with Birzeit University who has offices in Gaza and we brought Birzeit University and young people and CRS together we um, started talking about a research idea and uh, we wanted to design a project that identifies major issues that affect the lives of young people in Gaza today such as the closure, the Hamas takeover, the internal political conflict, the frequent uh, Israeli military incursions in Gaza, and how, uh, the kinds of activities they engage in to generate change in their situation, and um, their vision for Palestine, 
and um, what, needs, what they think needs to be done to make that vision a reality. Uh, so we trained these youth researchers um, in research methodology. They went out into the field and interviewed uh, 1,296 young people throughout the Gaza Strip. And uh, at this point, we're analyzing the results of this research, and uh, we would like them to do advocacy activities based on the results of this research. We want them to be able to write to their government or to, Hama to, the, to the PA authority or to the Hamas authority, to the Israeli government, to the government of the United States for their asks for, for positive change in, in Gaza. Um, how would you use the political situation 